वेलकम टू आत्मा एंड टुडे वी आर लर्निंग चैनल्स इन फोटोशॉप दिस इज पार्ट टू एंडिंग विद सेम वाई के हाउ डज द प्रिंटर प्रिंट दिस इमेज वेल बिलीव इट आर नॉट द प्रिंटर यूजेस ओनली फोर कलर्स और इंक्स टू प्रोड्यूस दिस इमेज द कलर्स आर साइन मजेंटा येलो एंड ब्लैक ऑल्सो नोन एज की टूगेदर दे कम्बाइन टू फॉर्म डिफरेंट कलर्स साइन एंड येलो कम्बाइन टू फॉर्म ग्रीन Yellow and magenta combine to form red. Magenta and cyan combine to form blue. And the three of them combine to form black. Then what is this black ink for if all the three colors can combine to form black? There are two reasons. First, all the three inks inside the printer will be used up if they keep on producing black. So having a separate black ink inside the printer divides the job among the four and it's less taxing and demanding for the three colors. And the second reason is the production of rich black. To produce rich black, we need this black and the key black. The inks form an image by a combination of three processes. By overlapping, by spacing the ink drops in different ways, and by altering the sizes of the ink drops. Let's review the theory with this image taken out of the printer. If we put this image under the microscope, we will be able to see the tiny droplets of inks that form this image. For example, the printer ejects the four inks in such a permutation of spacing and size to overlap or combine to form this color. This is how this shade of green is printed. And we get the shade of blue like this. But why do we need these color modes? What is the difference between CMYK and RGB? Because mechanism for the production of printed images and that on the screen are totally different. Print uses ink and screen uses light to produce images. Also print takes cyan, magenta, yellow and black and screen takes red, green and blue as their respective component colors. In RGB, the more colored components you combine, the brighter it becomes and hence RGB color mode is called additive. But in CMYK, the more component colors you combine, the darker it becomes. So the CMYK color mode is called subtractive. But you can say that the main reason to have a separate CMYK color mode and an RGB color mode is because of the color gamut. If this big shape is the range of the color spectrum that our eye can perceive, this triangle is the range of the color spectrum that RGB can produce on the screen. And even smaller than that is the range of CMYK. Let's say you made this circle inside Photoshop in RGB mode and you used this part of the RGB spectrum. But if you take this to the print shop, it won't be able to print this color. Instead, it's gonna take the nearest color from the CMYK spectrum and use that. So, a lackluster faded green is gonna come out of the printer. And that is why when designing for print, you must always use CMYK color mode in order to use just the colors which the printer can produce. Now you can access the CMYK channels inside of Photoshop in a couple of ways. First is while you create a new document. Here, under color mode, you can select CMYK. So, if we go up to channels, all the components will be in CMYK. The document tab also informs that this is a CMYK document. But suppose you forget to select your color mode while creating a new document. So, I'll leave it to RGB intentionally. So that we have RGB in our channel components and also in our document tab. Now in a position like this, you can change the color mode by going to image, mode, then CMYK mode. I'll confirm this. But before that, I want your eyes to be here and here. We have CMYK in the channels as well as on the document tab. And as you might have noticed, for RGB, we need the full strengths of red, green and blue lights to produce this white. But for CMYK, we don't need any ink because this is just the plain white paper. Let me reinforce the concept of color gamut through this image inside of Photoshop. At this point, the document is in RGB mode. 
I want you to take note of the richness of the colors of the image when it's in RGB mode. Then I will go up to image, mode and then same YK mode. But before that I'll ask you to prepare your eyes for the color shift. Clearly the colors are faded in CMYK mode and that is because it tries to match the nearest colors from the smaller color spectrum of CMYK. So this is how a printer is going to produce this green image. Let's take a look at the CMYK channels and see how it works. So this is the composite we have right before us. I'll open the sign channel by clicking on it. The white portion is the paper and the blue portion is the ink. The saturated portions have bigger drops of inks which are spaced close together and the less saturated portions have smaller drops of inks which are spaced far apart. And the same is true for all the other three channels. Last time I'm going to prove inside of Photoshop that the four inks, cyan, magenta, yellow and black combine to produce this image. For that, I'll create a new layer for the cyan ink. I'll go to channels and then open cyan. Then I'll hold control on my keyboard and click on the thumbnail to make a selection. Since this is CMYK, we need to invert the selection by pressing shift Control i on our keyboard. What the selection does is that it gets the information about the distribution of the cyan ink. I'll get the composite, then go to layers and hide the image so you can see what's happening. Next as pure cyan as my foreground color, I'm gonna grab my paint bucket tool, then fill the selection. So I fast forwarded and already completed the other three channels. I'm gonna delete this image, we don't need this anymore. We are gonna need a white paper on which we are gonna put the inks. So let's create a new layer and fill this with white. Then I'll turn on the ink layers one by one. But these are not inks yet. To convert them into inks, we need to select the four layers and then change their blending mode to multiply. That's how we have the final print. And this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.